Robert Hill. Oh, water break. Oh, almost to the top. This is a terrible idea. My man, my man. My man. It is notorious for being the most difficult stretch of the HAC Peachtree Road Race. Very, very difficult. So you're coasting along when suddenly you hit Cardiac Hill. That comes into sight 12, 12 steps, yeah, that's 12 about floors, it. right? Even the most experienced athletes admit it's grueling to run all that way up in the Georgia heat and humidity. But for Chesley McNeil, it is his favorite part of the course. Folks, this is Cardiac Hill. It's a steep incline of about 12 stories up. And if you're not careful, it may do you in. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> This hill, if you look at the runners, a lot of them are walking because as you head up the hill, it is really, really difficult. Looking good, you're at the top, it's downhill from here. It was tough, man, the hill was, it was a monster. I had to slow down for the hill, yeah. but I'm ready to pick it back up and finish strong. Yeah, keep going, keep going. It's not so bad if you're, uh, if you're running around Atlanta, but if you're not, it'll uh, slow you down. The humidity is high and the people are really working it off. You got one, two, and then three. Yeah. How many have you made it through yet so far? Oh, I've already refilled. <laughs> <laughs> so. Most people hydrate on water. What are you hydrating on here? This is carbs. <laughs> Describe cardiac kill in just a few words. Painful, painful. Good job, everybody, good job. Cardiac Hill is over. For every uphill, there's a downhill. You know, he's got to keep going. There's a good park at the end of it. And uh, you're halfway there, so why not keep going? Oh! 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 All right, I'll keep going for you. The heat and the humidity will always be a defining part of the HAC Peachtree Road Race. It makes it so very difficult. In fact, they moved the race up 30 minutes in an effort to try to counter the conditions. Yeah, this year. I think that was a great idea as well, if yeah. you consider what happened last year. One runner gave us all a scare when he suffered a heart attack. I mean, right here, right next to us, he suffered a heart attack right before the finish line. And thanks to an incredible team, he survived and lived to tell the tale. Here's John Shearer. Time it. Oh, it was great. How quick is the moment? We were keeping a pretty good pace. From one heartbeat to the next. We felt good. We were we were running a good race. It is a split second in the heart of a runner who is nearing the finish line. We were having a good time. That split second for Tim Nelms of McDonald. I had no clue I had any problem whatsoever. That split second just short of the finish line at the 2017 AJC Peachtree Road Race. No chest pains, no shortness of breath, nothing. Took Tim Nelms from life to death that fast. I remember starting towards the ground, but I don't remember anything after that. Defining the rest of his life. I didn't hear the words that day, <clears throat> but I heard them later. Sudden cardiac death. Sudden cardiac death. Sudden cardiac death. Tim Nelms, a marathon runner with a strong heart, a fit heart, but he didn't know. I had an artery that was 100% blocked. He never thought he would ever have a clogged artery. I was a runner. I thought I was out running this. But that was the problem as he was approaching the finish line. Tim Nelms and his then 61-year-old heart could not outrun that clogged artery. Are you telling me that your heart stopped? Totally. Just then, Dr. Douglas Ander, an emergency medicine physician from Emory and Grady Hospital, about to cross the finish line himself, saw Tim Nelms collapse. And so he stopped. And Dr. Ander performed CPR while the track club's medical response team rallied using a portable AED to shock Nelms' heart and get him to the hospital. They found the blocked artery. They uh, inserted the stent. Doctors told Tim Nelms that a heart that was less fit than a runner's heart might not have survived. And Nelms, who often worked out alone along the quieter roads of Henry County, also knows he could easily have collapsed a day or two earlier where there would have been no one around to help him. You know, I picked the perfect place in the world to have cardiac arrest event. That's all there is to it. Everything that I could have possibly wished for was probably more readily available there than even in a hospital, maybe. 
Tim Nelm slowly resumed his running under his doctor's care, under his family's care, and in celebration, Tim Nelms and Dr. Douglas Ander decided to run the 2018 Peachtree together. Nelms running for Dr. Ander and all the others who saved his life. That split second from one heartbeat to the next a year ago defines Tim Nelm's life now. Grateful for every moment and remembering for the rest of his life the peach tree that saved his life. I owe them everything I have. I just wanted to say thank you to them. I'm looking forward to it. I feel great. I'm here. I, I crossed the finish line this year. <laughs> we ran together as a family. His daughter, my two daughters, had a great time. Crossed the finish line. It was a lot of fun. We enjoyed it. Tim Nelms take a bow. Incredible. So you think 6.2 miles with brutal hills is tough in the heat. Try doing that in a wheelchair. It is. It takes such great strength and endurance for wheelchair racers to finish the course. This year, Daniel Rumanchuk took home the top prize in the men's wheelchair division. And for the women, it was Susanna Scaroni. Those athletes serve as a huge inspiration to others recovering from spinal injuries, and many of them beginning their road to recovery at the Shepherd Center, which is one of the top rehab facilities in the country. Now, West Blankenship will introduce us to one of the fierce competitors who, who simply refused to quit. Talbot Kennedy lives to compete wherever he happens to be sitting. Once I got in a rugby chair and the first time I hit somebody, I was like, oh, okay, I, I could definitely see myself doing this. The 14 years since Talbot broke his C5 and C6 vertebrae began at the Shepherd Center. After a tumbling accident in high school, Talbot's plan to cheer on scholarship at Kentucky never happened. I didn't want to just not, not, do anything the rest of my life because I was in a wheelchair. So he plays rugby on the USA wheelchair rugby team. The squad beat Japan in June to win the 2018 Canada Cup. Right now we're uh, second behind Australia and the world championship is in Australia. So going to their territory, um, hopefully we'll pull out the win. Talbot's first order of business pushing in the AJC Peachtree Road Race as part of the Shepherd team. Last year was my best time I had had. I think it was around 32 minutes, and so it would be nice to get under that this year. For Talbot, Team Shepherd is bigger than a road race. He spends each day helping new patients as a peer support liaison. We'll see them go from, you know, where I was in the beginning and, and see them make progress. Um, it's a really great feeling. Kyle Cassidy has some pre-race motivation. Talbot, you better win because if you don't, um, I'm going to be upset. Hashtag Team Talbot. All right, Grant, you got this. All right, yeah. West Blankenship, 11 Alive News. It takes our entire 11 Alive staff to be able to bring you exclusive coverage of the peach tree. And we have 20 cameras positioned along the route. Our, our team members aren't just taping the race, but also they are running it. They are taking part in it. They are sweating just like you. Yeah, that's right. So how do you prepare for the 6.2 mile course and run with all of that gear? Here's how Crash Clark trains. Runner set. It's time for the 2018 AJC Peachtree Road Race. But before we lace up and head south on Peachtree, we need to train. Welcome to the Atlanta Track Club's In Training for Peachtree program. We started back in mid-April with a series of Saturday runs from West Stride running in Buckhead. Each week we started with a little stretching. This is the part we don't put on TV. <laughs> a little bit of jogging, even some walking. Bye. <laughs> and occasionally we did some running. Our lead runner, Sonia, from the Atlanta Track Club, discussed our strategy for the weekend. Okay, well, we want you to stay hydrated. Uh, at least drink half your body weight in the water, like some me. Well, I don't want to tell mine. <laughs> but, uh, me I mean, neither, don't worry. Yeah. Pretty soon we were off and running down West Paces, led by Old Glory herself. Too easy, too easy. Yeah. When it was all said and done, the group made the six miles and then some. No, I think I came out of the gate a little bit too quickly and I lost my group. So is it okay if I join you guys? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, there may have been some shenanigans on my part that day, but the training program is serious business, meant to get you ready for the grueling 
Fourth of July temperatures. Oh, hydration station. Thank gosh. Woo! And the travel along Atlanta's famous stretch in the world's largest 10K, the AJC Peachtree Road Race. I went through the drive-thru. <laughs> No words for Crash, really. <laughs> All right, so how did Crash and the rest of our runner cam team do? Did they make it to the finish? Uh, we'll tell you what happened. Plus, their friendship started before the peach tree even existed. Now, between the two of them, they have run it more than 80 times with a little friendly competition thrown in the mix. I was bragging about uh, that being about my 35th. He said, well, it is mine, too. <laughs>